Morning guys. Uh, so today's little sketch, uh, it was done a short while back now um, for a painting that I am actually still working on. So uh, you'll see that at some point in the, the future, I dare say. Um, but I love to paint wildlife. Um, but this is a slightly different sketching approach because this is using watercolour just uh, without any drawing, just working from a photograph just to get some study in for uh, orangutans, uh, which is what the focus of the painting it was um, for, for this one. Um, so yeah, it's a playful little study. Um, I'll, I will actually do a, a few, uh, discuss a few techniques as I'm going through it. But yeah, you, you can sit down and have a little bit of uh, fun for 20 minutes, half an hour. I think that's what this took. Um, um, just having a play and we sketching with watercolor or a different medium to pen, color pencil is, um, is quite liberating. Uh, biro anything you can't actually rub out because one of the things about sketching is 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 you just want to capture the essence of the idea it's not about having a polished finished piece uh, which I think is what a lot of people get confused with with the difference between sketching and drawing or painting um, but yeah if you have a, 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 a something that you'd like to see particularly if it's along wildlife or fantasy or something like that uh, I've got some cool ideas coming along, which I think will work quite well. But um, yeah, if you have any ideas, drop them down in the comments, and I'll um, and I'll see what I can do in terms of plugging a sketch into the the uh, the Saturday sketch. Okay, all right. So let's get my brushes out and uh, let's uh, let's get this one on the on the road. Okay, see you in a bit. So you can see I've got my dirty watercolour palette there, which um, is the way I like to keep my uh, my palette. I have a few clean wells, I clean it out occasionally, but I like to keep my uh, palette dirty so that I've always got access to a variety of colours. Um, and you'll also note that I've got a selection of uh, reference photos around me, which are leading into the actual painting that I was doing this sketch for. Uh, but the um, but the, to start off to warm up effectively is, uh, is I'm just working from one of those photos uh, which I'll put on the screen here now and the the, the first real sort of step is to get the simple breakdown of the the shapes uh, of the of the photo um, yeah, or of the piece that you're going to study whether that's a photo or whatever. Uh, so once we've broken it down into the two, well in this instance, two simplest forms, that's the, the background and the, the orangutan itself as a simple shapes. Then we want to start just identifying where um, breaks within that shape language occur, uh, the crossed arms, where the head is going to be. And we keep that, um, still keep it simple, just sort of loosely blocking in. Now what you'll notice is, is, is I sort of lay down a patch of colour and then I add a little water to make that uh, that patch of colour flow and that just keeps the, the liveliness of the watercolour um, going. It, 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 it extends the past the contrived mark making that we lay down initially uh, and, and breaks the that... Um, Breaks that, con breaks that contrivance into something a little bit looser, a little bit more abstract, uh, the, the, to get marks that we don't necessarily um, consider. And that's one of the beauties, I think, of watercolour. But it's also one of the things that people fight with the most, is the, the actual ability of watercolour to travel and move across the paper. Start getting the loose gesture of the uh, of the bamboo in the background. I'm just using a flat brush, dark green, and just using vertical stripes uh, or vertical lines that I lay, top to bottom, coming down close to the uh, to the orangutan's head. Um, the important thing again is to once you've laid down a few of these vertical strokes, so just add a little water um, to to get a, a little bit of flow to break that contrived line again. Um, 
and 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 other secondary colours uh, to uh, to add a little bit of uh, excitement. And I'm playing around here with um, compliments. So I'm adding a burnt sienna into those uh, darker greens, uh, which is a, technically a red in this instance. This is one little technique I very much do like to use in my watercolours, and that is lifting out. Um, I use it to uh, to great extent, um, and it's great for just lifting out little soft highlights and transitions, curved curved transitions uh, from one plane to another. Um, so here, the uh, the we use a small brush with a little clean water on it. And we just work that brush into the area that we want to lift out. Don't work for too long. Uh, use a piece of kitchen roll to just lift out that bit of moisture before it starts traveling and uh, reinvigorating pigment that we don't want reinvigorated. And it, it, you get some really lovely, subtle uh, uh, little uh, variations within the major shape. Uh, some watercolours will stain the paper a bit too heavily to do this and some watercolour papers will also be stained more readily by watercolour pigments um, so it's a bit of trial and error but it's worth worth the try uh, so I'm just bringing in a few darks now and this is just with a nice thin down bit of burnt umber um, just to introduce uh, the the deeper sh shades in the uh, in the shadows there, and uh, harmonising out through the uh, the sketch. I'm also strengthening the uh, deeper shadows in the anatomy as well. And again, always remember we lay down a little bit of the colour, and then we pick an edge which we soften, and we do that by adding just a little clean water to the edge of the mark we just made, and and that. Uh, cannot be overstated enough how much that keeps your watercolours looking lively. So it's time now for me to just start pushing uh, some contrast into the uh, in, into the foreground, into the focal point. Um, and I'm just doing that by laying over a, a wash. Uh, I tend to do a wash uh, with a different colour. In this instance, I think I'm using a mix of alizarin and crimson and burnt sienna, which just it might be permanent rose and, uh, and burnt sienna, which just uh, uh, pops a little bit of warmth into the... Um, into the orange tones there uh, it just, and, and I'm playing around with this putting it wherever increasing the strength here and there to to add uh, dy dynamic um, you know contrast into into the uh, into the fur textures um, and really sort of uh, intensifying some of the deeper shadows and it's all pretty much with that same color and still using that same um, wet into wet technique with the uh, the little bit of clean water to ensure that the paint has somewhere to run so that's pretty much it really it just you know the bulk of the work is done of the sketch and, and now it's just a case of refining just little areas here and there as uh, as a need intensifying strengthening glazing knocking back whichever mm -hmm. 